I think my primary drops are gonna be the clary sage. These other ones will be lighter. It feels so good, it's so nice. My tummy's warm. Thanks for clicking on Simply Tanika. I am Tanika. If you are new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. Let's hang out a while. If you are returning, welcome. What's up, fertility fam? We gotta do what? Let's get those babies, ladies. I see the crystal raindrops fall and the beauty what's up fertility fam today is saturday it is november 17th the days are ticking away uh, i have done four days of stem and i'm feeling a little crampy today today will be day five but because i'm doing it so close to midnight i've only done four um sets of injections i guess and so i'm feeling a little crampy i did a hot water bottle across my belly i've been doing that and i think uh, i'm going to make an essential oil concoction for myself and so i've got out some a couple of oils i've got clary sage i have geranium rose some rose hip seed oil and lavender, which is a calming oil. I'm going to use the avocado oil as a base. Actually, the avocado oil is a bit heavy. Let me see if I can find the coconut oil for the base. I got almond oil, which is a little bit lighter than the avocado oil. That way, I just don't wanna clog it up. I want it to be a little lighter and I wanna spray it and so yeah, we'll use that. And then I have a whole collection of stuff over here. I've got some more lavender oil. I have some tea tree oil, castor oil. This is kind of my little self-care basket, which in taking this out, I realized there's more stuff that I could use. And I have my abundance candle, which I'm going to light in a little bit that one of you guys gave me. And just some different stuff in here. I've got lavender, mango, and papaya body butter. So I think all of these will be good when I get back from retrieval. And then I'm just kind of thinking through my retrieval prep, but let's go through the essential oils and then we'll talk about retrieval prep. So I pulled up some of the stuff on my laptop and I'll talk through what I'm finding, why I'm using these. So Clary Sage, which is this one. And I think I got these at Whole Foods. Yeah, these I got at Whole Foods. I think this one I got at like GNC. But you can get them online, you can get them at Whole Foods, or everybody has essential oils. You just wanna make sure they're high quality, um, which it'll say 100% pure essential oil and from a reputable place. So Clary Sage, this oil is a very powerful in terms of aiding in conception. Not only does this particular oil aid in the reduction of monthly bloating, depression, anxiety, cramps, and hot flashes, it's widely known to normalize the endocrine system, balancing hormones within the body. Very important in terms of conception, so that's like a good balancing thing. It also helps with cramps, which is what I'm having today. I think hormonal balance is great um, because I am taking all of these hormones. Let's have them all be balanced out. I'm taking a lot of synthetic hormones. This is not going to impact the synthetic hormones, but it will help complement my own natural hormones, the hormones my body is making, and help keep those nice and balanced, which I think is great. So that that's where I'm putting in the Clary Sage. Then let's see if we can find, I've got Geranium Rose is what I have. Um, and then I have Rose Hip Seed Oil. And I'm just Googling Geranium Rose Oil Fertility and seeing what comes up. Here's one from April of 18, how to use essential oils for fertility. Let's see what they've got to say. This one is going more into how to use it, which is, I got some great stuff like in the bath, oil diffusers, which I think I want to get an oil diffuser for the house for when I come back from egg retrieval. I think that'll be nice. So I'm going to put that on my list. I've got a growing list of things to get now. Also, I'm going to do laundry, get all of my warm fuzzy socks washed. I have on some fuzzies tonight and, or today it's like nine o'clock in the morning right now. Um, Clary Sage, Geranium. So Geranium not only smells good, it's a powerhouse for improving fertility. It's another essential oil that is great for balancing hormones and regulating your cycle. It is also recommended as an essential oil for endometriosis. I don't have endometriosis, but that signifies that it would be good for lining in general. Um, endometriosis is lining that's growing in the wrong place. But 
I will just say lining management. Um, I don't see the germane rose though. I do see or geranium rose. I see like geranium and I see ger German chamomile. Um, Lang Lang, which is nice. I don't have that one. Okay, we'll come back. Clary Sage, we did. Let's do lavender. I think. I always use lavender like for headaches or whatnot. I'll put it on my temples. I put it on my eye mask, which is somehow out of reach right now. Oh, here it is. This is a weighted eye mask and it you can put essential oils on it and use it for relaxing. And it's made to put essential oils on it. You can also microwave it or warm it up. Like you can put it under the heating pad to get it warm and then put it over your eyes. It's also good if you're doing like long restorative yoga poses to put this over your eyes. The key being the darkness helps get you into your parasympathetic nervous system which helps you relax. When you're not in that, you're in, you're in fight or flight mode and like as I am running around New York, your system can't relax and so getting into parasympathetic helps relax and helps kick in your body just chilling and doing like all the natural things it's meant to do. What was the other one I wanted to show? Oh, lavender. So lavender is the most adaptable of all essential oils. It contains more natural chemical constituents than any other plant, as many as 200, and therefore has a great range of usefulness. There's a lot of misleading information about lavender. Lavender oil does not mimic estrogen, nor does it enhance the body's own estrogens. It is therefore not a hormone disruptor, cannot cause breast growth, etc. So I know there apparently there's a lot of controversy over lavender. I'm going to use it. I feel comfortable using it. Um, my acupuncturist and herbal medicine herbal medicineist um, has recommended it for me so I feel completely comfortable using it. So this, I'm going to make this essential oil. I'm going to use it on my body. I'm also going to add it to a little bit of Epsom salt and use it in a soak. So I'm going to make my little essential oil blend. And today I'm going to rub this on my abdomen with my heating pad. So I'm just adding a little bit of the almond oil. And you always need a carrier oil with, with the essential oils and you just want to put a few drops in. I think my primary drops are going to be the clary sage. These other ones will be lighter. Oh, I wanted to look up the rose hip oil. That's what, one more thing. I'm so easily distracted. Rose hip oil, fertility. So I found something on Wellness Mama. I love her site. Reminded me to drink enough water, get enough sleep. All those are important. Herbs, red raspberry leaf, I've been taking that as a tea. Nettle leaf, sometimes I take it. Uh, not a big nettle leaf girl. Dandelion, I take that in my detox tea. I think there's nettle leaf in the detox tea as well. Alfalfa, don't take that. Red clover, don't take that. Maca, I'm taking that daily. The Vitex or, Chess, or Chase tree berry, I'm taking that daily now. I originally said I wasn't because it was an herb, but then after some research and consultation, I'm using that for our current <laughs> stimming. After, um, after retrieval will be a different story. Okay, vitamin D, vitamin C, folate, check, check, zinc, selenium, B vitamins. Okay, okay, let's go back to our search results. There's a lot on rosehip oil and pregnancy, but let's see about rosehip oil and... Yeah, it's all about pregnancy. Um, rosehip oil. Is rosehip oil the secret behind Kate Middleton's pregnancy? Well, there you go, there's a scandal. Rosehip oil comes from the hips that are left behind when a rose blooms and then loses its petals. The seed left behind is then sourced and turned into rosehip oil. Interesting. Oh, I'm drinking apple cider vinegar water with lime in it, if you're wondering. It's not vodka at nine o'clock in the morning. I was walking around with a drink like this at work and somebody thought I had pickles in the jar which just seems odd. Okay, rosehip oil apparently helps reduce wrinkles, stretch marks and scars, brightens and evens out skin tones, lightens dark spots, helps to heal bruises, rosacea, eczema. I tell you what, that sounds like an oil that we will use after we're done stimming and we'll see if my belly is bruised or whatnot. Um, I'm not really so worried about cosmetics right now. I want to do what is going to make me feel good. So I'm going to now drop in some, this is the lavender oil. And this you just drop, It's uh, you don't squeeze it, it's on a dropper, sometimes you can just dab it. Although they recommend always having it in a carrier oil. I think because I'm so accustomed to lavender, I've used it for so many years, I don't have um, 
a reaction to it, like just on my temples. I'm not gonna rub it all over my belly, but. And then Clary Sage is going to be my primary oil in this mix, so take that off. I'm just gonna put some seltzer water in there. Yes, yes, oil and water don't mix, but uh-oh. With all the oil, I wanna just make sure it comes out of my spray bottle, because I wanna spray it. You see it all floats to the top. I will remember to shake it and incorporate it. So a little bit of wetness that I'm gonna avoid from where I spill the water. So I'm just gonna spray this now on my tummy and then if you've seen my castor oil video, you know that I like to pack in the heat with that. So I'm gonna use this so the oil is not directly on my jammies and just spray that. There's my lovely Band-Aid from last night's injections, or two Band-Aids, so I'm gonna spray. It feels so good, it's so nice. My tummy's warm. Put that here. I just wanna put that on there so I don't have oil directly on my clothing, even though I diluted it. And then I'm going to put this heating pad there. emergency blanket over there and then I'll be back with you guys because I want to relax a little bit I will come back and we will talk about my other prep I'm, I have an IVF egg retrieval checklist that I want to go through with you guys I'm excited about it I've watched a couple of YouTube videos and I think I got it down so I want to share it with you guys I'll do it now before the egg retrieval and then I'll come back after the egg retrieval and let you know if I make any adjustments so but I I'm a planner we gotta have a plan so let's come back and talk about that later Hey fam! All right, I'm out walking out and about. There's Central Park. I've been in it twice. Walk through there, realized I lost my hat. Had to go back and get it. Luckily, Blue had an extra hat in his backpack, so that's in my head. We did find my cap. It's in his backpack. Um, yeah. So now we're headed home because I I have to be there by two for the prescription drop off. Probably not gonna make it by two, but the window is two to eight and. You know, the way my luck is going, they'll be there right at two. But we'll see. <laughs> I did get out, which is the important thing, and I got to exercise more today than I have any other day. So it will probably end up being about three hours of walking when it's all said and done. So that's good, right? Still a little crampy, but not as much as before. Uh, as, it, as I got colder, it returned, but I'm okay. Hanging in there, and I think the walking is good for circulation and blood flow and all that fun stuff. All right, guess what just got delivered? The Novarel. This is the last thing. There's two boxes because it's 10,000. Um, you see that it says intramuscular only. It's going in my butt, y'all. Um, so there's a vial of the chorionic gonotropin for injection and a vial of the bacteriostatic water. So it's going to be mixed. My neighbor is a nurse. I'm going to ask if maybe she'll help me with the intramuscular. Um, I don't know if Blue will act. Well, he can do it. I mean, technically. I just don't know if that <laughs> is what I want. I think I need a skilled hand. I need a man with a skilled hand. I need somebody who will understand. Anyway, it's here. I'm eating. We walked so much because I lost my hat. Um, I, it was like, I didn't even, I don't even remember. I think it's like three and a half hours. So I was too tired to make anything. So I just ordered uh, right before the pharmacy came and the food came. I got French toast, turkey bacon, and soft, or I guess over easy eggs. Um, I'm picking out on that and catching up on videos. I'm watching um, Tamika TTC's videos. I was trying to figure out her retrieval and transfer process, protocol, experience, etc. So that was uh, good and interesting. And then I also watched Gay Babe TV. They did their egg retrieval um, with their daughter who is now, I think she's like 10 months, little Reagan is, baby girl. And 
that was the only egg retrieval I found video where it, where Chad was like the her husband was like I'm I have to go do my part because I was just trying to figure out like in the coordination of things when would Blue have to do his part will he be able to go in with me I know a lot of the ladies afterwards seem to be kept for an hour in Tamika's video it doesn't look like she was kept and she drove afterwards so like for but I think that was her transfer actually so for the egg retrieval i know i will not be allowed to drive you have to have an escort because they put you to sleep but i guess maybe not for transfer um and she also said they didn't give her any instructions and i know i can't have like cologne perfume scent so every lab doctor already has her own protocol so it's best to like ask your doctor you can kind of get these videos and research and doctor google for a reference but at the end of the day it's what your doctor wants and what that clinic is doing that really you have to adhere to so and they have a rhythm it's how they you know track their success rates and everything else so I'm just gonna follow what they are saying to do and pray for the best I'll ask lots of questions and if something doesn't sound right I'll ask to do something different I mean my doctor is very open like if you want to do this we can do that I'm you know I'm fine and most of the time I just want the information I just want to know why we're doing something not necessarily that we shouldn't be doing it so she has a degree not me I trust her wholeheartedly. If I didn't trust her, I wouldn't be there, which is why I left the other RE. So anyway, this is here. Uh, I can now eat my food and take a shower because I was afraid to hop in the shower because I did not want to miss the pharmacy. And the poor guy, I didn't tip him. He got stuck in between the two doors after I buzzed him in and I went to let him in, not thinking, oh yeah, he's not coming upstairs and I didn't bring any money, but anyway, it's fine. The medicine's here, I'm sure he'll live. I'm not a bad person, Mr. Delivery Guy, I promise. So that's it, I'm going to do, I think I'm actually, well, I'm definitely gonna just do a bath, because I, I mean a shower because I'm cold, but I think I wanna do later on tonight a warm bath with some of the um, spray that I made earlier with the essential oils. I wanna put it a little bit in the Epsom salt and mix that all up and put it in and take a soak, but I just have a chill from being outside, sweating underneath, and then coming in and it's warm, and as my as I'm cooling off, my um, clothes just feel wet. So I'm gonna scarf this food down, hop in the shower. I'll be back, because I've done some Amazon shopping that I wanna go over with you guys for prep day. And I watched this lady, the Egg Whisperer, do you guys, have you guys heard of her on um, YouTube, Dr. Amy? And I've got some other things to add to my retrieval day list. So I want to talk to you guys about that. I'll be back. To make those rainbows in my mind when I think of you sometime and I want to spend